Hello guys, welcome back. My name is Andrei. In this video, I'll explain uh, how to change uh, uh, notebook from Niels uh, Roger, uh, where uh, he provides a code to uh, fine tune don't model on uh, on a, a core dataset. So in a Jupyter notebook, typically uh, you have a, a single line of uh, of code, uh, if you could say so where uh, on the first level, on, on this main level, you usually have a code that loads model, uh, loads processor, configuration, uh, then there are some classes to uh, prepare data set, then there are some classes to uh, define how the fine tuning should be done, and all the code is executed in uh, the sequential order. That works well in notebook, but uh, when you want to uh, get this code and uh, uh, change it to work uh, uh, under your uh, API, uh, for example, in fast API application endpoint, then it doesn't work so well to just take and copy paste the notebook code uh, straight into the Python script and invoke it from uh, fast API endpoint because uh, uh, since all the code is under this, the same level, then as soon as application starts, then uh, immediately before even endpoint is invoked, it will try to uh, in invoke all the API and load the model, load the processor, and uh, do all the initialization and so on. But typically, you'd like to delay this uh, stuff until the endpoint is actually invoked because your application may contain multiple uh, endpoints and you don't want to load them just when application loads, for example. All right, so uh, let's jump into my screen and I'll show <clears throat> how I change a bit the original code. Uh, and in our solution, which is called Sparrow, which is on the GitHub, and I'll point the URL. I'll put the URL uh, below the video to the Sparrow. You can find all the source code there. Everything is available. And in the readme, for the ML model, I, under the references, I have a reference that points to the uh, Transformers tutorials from the Niels Roger for the Donut uh, notebook specifically, which um, describes how to fine tune uh, Donut model based on a core date set uh, with PyTorch lighting and um, uh, with all the Hanging Face uh, API infrastructure. It's very, very useful, and this was the primary source for my own implementation. Right, so if I go to the development environment. So uh, what we see here is the uh, training script, which uh, acts as a, a fast API endpoint. And we have uh, run training um, function here, which is exposed by um, fast API annotation as a REST endpoint. And we invoke uh, training as a background task, uh, as a fast API background task, because uh, training usually takes lots of time and you don't want to block your application by uh, invoking it as, as a basically immediate synchronous request. You want to run it in, in the background. So in, we invoke training and uh, we have a call run training donut function, which comes from, from the script. And what we see here is uh, we prepare uh, all the uh, properties for training and then we call a uh, function called prepare job. And then we uh, basically get the uh, model and then we execute PyTorch lighting uh, task to do fine tuning and so on. So th this stuff is commented out here just because uh, when I'm testing the code, I don't want to start actual fine tuning, obviously, because I don't want to, <clears throat> uh, during testing, to fine tune the model uh, as my goal, but I want to see how the entire code and entire infrastructure runs. When I do actual fine tuning, uh, I just could uncomment this code and run uh, and run the task. So the main point here is this uh, uh, prepare job. Uh, and if I go and uh, search for it, uh, okay, so it's over here. This is the function on the top is being defined. There are some of the uh, configuration values that um, instead of keeping them hard coded in the code like uh, model name, processor name, data set name, uh, whatever other other stuff. So I'm reading them from the separate class uh, from the settings, and this way, 
if I would like to train or fine tune another model, um, I just uh, go and change those um, properties in configuration instead of uh, um, scrolling through the entire script and looking up where each property is being used as a hard coded one. Yeah, so this is a prepared job um, function. This is the place where dataset is being fetched, and then uh, we fetch over here configuration, then the processor and, and model, all the stuff being fetched over here, everything is prepared, and then uh, everything is returned. All the data that is uh, being used in those helper classes where data is being transformed, then PyTorch job is being defined, and so on. And I'm using here uh, LRU cache, uh, and this means that the function is invoked uh, only once uh, during uh, application lifetime, and when there is a next call uh, is executed to this function, then it would not execute this heavy API, it would not load models again, it would uh, return data from cache, return those variables initialized previously from cache, and uh, we'll use them. And I'm doing this on purpose to simplify uh, adoption of the code from the notebook to be uh, suitable for this um, uh, to, to work as an endpoint, endpoint code uh, to minimize uh, refactoring. That's because uh, the function is invoked from multiple places, not just uh, from the single place. And this is how um, typically code in a notebook works. There are those dependencies, global level, lots of global level dependencies, like a model is loaded on a global level, and then there are multiple functions that are using this model directly as a variable. And make to make the refactoring simpler, uh, I'm using a little cache, and this allows to execute the same function multiple times, and on the second, third time, uh, uh, the call to this function will be very fast. For example, here uh, it's being used prepare job under uh, donut dataset is being used. Then uh, under add tokens function from uh, from the same donut dataset is being used as well. And uh, we're returning all the parameters, uh, and then we are just using here uh, thing the processor. Yeah, processor is being used over here. Then there is another place under get items from the same class. Uh, we're using dataset here, processor, and few other things probably, uh, like uh, yeah, let's see, uh, model is not being used, processor is being used, dataset is not config image size, this one is not used. Yeah, so uh, process is being used in this place. And then if you go next, uh, okay, over here, okay, this place, uh, it, this is another function to build data loaders. And we are also calling prepare job and getting the uh, variables. Then, uh, yeah, like models being used under this function, then data set is not max length, for example, is being used. And finally, uh, this is the last, last place of the uh, of where the prepared job is being invoked, uh, the main, uh, yeah, under the build data loaders, right? So uh, this is the place, the last place, actually, uh, number six, uh, yeah, and it was incorrectly moved. So prepared job is being called from the run training donut as the uh, last place. Yeah, and if you look for uh, for the build data loaders, the, let's see where is that. Let's scroll up. Yeah, let's see. Okay, this function is being used from uh, don't uh, from the place where. Um, uh, PyTorch lighting task is being prepared um, and under the constructor build data loaders are being invoked. Yeah, so to simplify the refactoring task, uh, uh, LRU cache annotation was very helpful in this case because instead of trying to refactor all the places where top level variables are being used, they simply invoking the same function in each place. 
but uh, each, but that execution uh, runs uh, instant. It's very fast because um, variables are being uh, uh, fetched from cache. Yeah, so hopefully this uh, uh, hint was useful f and uh, you may use the same approach when you would uh, uh, refactor uh, notebook code into the API endpoint and uh, if you'd see some global variables that are um, initialized from Hugging Face API and it takes time to initialize those variables, you can wrap the code that initializing those variables into the function with LRU cache and invoke it multiple times uh, where you need it. So thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye.